Okay, it is October the 15th, 2016. It's a Saturday. I woke up at several times from around a little before 7 a.m. clear up until just right around 8 and I got out of bed because I couldn't take the pain and uh, I was flaring and I'm just getting over a cold felt pretty good yesterday I don't know why <clears throat> but today zapped no energy I woke up flaring because of the humidity and it was humid yesterday morning and I was flaring but the rest of the day went pretty good <sighs> it's real pretty outside windy pleasant temperatures the humidity is starting to go away let's see it is 76.4 degrees 69 percent humidity so that's much better because it was like 92 percent humidity yesterday morning i was flaring just like i did this morning anyway when the humidity is up i think the mold count goes up and i'm really allergic to mold if you see me looking i'm looking out the window at the trees blowing um, a big patio door that faces east and it's really pretty because there's no houses it's trees and a creek and yeah anyway you look at my face how red it is that's flaring looks like I got sun doesn't it looks like I've been outside exercising no I'm flaring and I'm exhausted and I've been sick and worn down. I've been to multiple doctor's appointments, including trying to take my son to get his allergy shot. I had my allergy shot back on the 10th. That's probably part of the reason I'm worn out. Department of Family Services sent me over for the every two year psych evaluation those are fun especially for somebody that probably has EDS I'm pretty 100% certain I have it not diagnosed yet but I've got so many of the symptoms pisiform joint and the wrist going out um, rotator cuffs bicep tendons ripped out um, <sighs> elbows knees knees have been bone on bone for years <laughs> according to the radiology results multiple fractures in my feet um, that weren't found till after they healed up and now I have these fun bone spurs in there <sighs> I have ribs that like to pop in and out on my left side collarbone on the left side pops in and out just washing myself in the shower um, last month has been a blur two months almost actually a blur paperwork for family services 15 pages once for my Medicaid and again for the food stamps and TANF whole $234 a month I've been living on for 16 years and it used to actually believe it or not with the HUD section 8 and uh, the food stamps I was able to get by on that and I did okay well now it isn't enough to pay the most basic of bills so 
Anyway, I've applied for Social Security. That report took me over six weeks to complete. Uh, writing a little bit at a time in between all these other things. These 15-page uh, deals from DFS twice. And then, oh, I gotta get back to that, that psyche eval I gotta do. That was fun. This doctor diagnosed me, basically, I forget the exact technical term. I should look that up. Um, basically, hypochondriac, about two months before I was diagnosed. Or a few months before I was actually diagnosed with mast cell activation disorder by an immunologist. And when I went to see that immunologist, well, I'll tell that story in a minute. But the psyche valve that DFS makes you go through. First of all, my hands were already so painful in my wrist from trying to write all those other reports for DFS and Social Security and between all that you get to sit in a psyche eval from 11 o'clock in the morning to 6 30 in the evening yes it takes that long because between the narcolepsy kicking in because I was severely fatigued already from doctor's appointments and just stress in general to not sleeping because of pain, flaring, anxiety that you get when you're flaring. Um, yeah, in between all those things and having a cold. Cold started hmm, a couple, let's see, the day before I had my CT scan with contrast which I had to take prednisone for because I'm allergic to the contrast dye. Back in my 20s, my first CT, gallbladder, um, was what the doctor was looking at because I've had stomach issues from my very earliest recollections. But um, this CT scan is, was for aorta and legs because a um, sonogram a couple of years ago of my legs and an arc aortogram done five or six years ago I don't remember exactly now shout outs having some issues with my vascular system which I've known because my feet turn black I don't know if it's Raynard's probably I have a whole list of fun things wrong, but uh, trigeminal neuralgia, and <clears throat> they said fibromyalgia. That's the pocket they put me in before I got diagnosed with mast cell, and I knew what that meant. That meant we don't know what's wrong with you, so this is where you go in the fibromyalgia pocket. Anyway, and a lot of times that means, oh, guess what, Lyrica. Guess what, I was allergic to Lyrica, along with all the other newfangled antidepressants the pharmaceutical companies want to shove on you because they try to make you sound like you're crazy because you have so many symptoms. <sighs> anyway, I was going to try to go to my father-in-law's to help him with his computer because one thing I still have is my brain. It still functions good. Unfortunately, others in my family are suffering from the uh, organic brain syndrome, is what they're calling it, and that goes along with mast cell. And so it's a, it's like a dementia, basically. And um, my mom has it 
pretty bad. And my older sister has started with the brain fog thing back, I don't know, 15 years ago. She was complaining of it 12 years ago, something like that. And I have moments like that if I'm severely fatigued where I get the brain fog thing. That's where it kicked in at the psychiatric appointment. Anyway, it's been one thing after another, plus taking my son for his allergy shots every Monday, which is a big deal to me because just getting out of the house once a week is a big deal. And doing it at a certain time frame, because our bodies don't work like that. You have good days, bad days, and you never know what you're going to get. Like, I thought, oh, I felt pretty good yesterday afternoon and evening. Figured I'd be able to go to my father-in-law's and work on his computer. I was basically just going to take the side off, look at the motherboard, see if it's got the connection for an SSD, and see if the power supply has the hookup for one and pop it back together. That's all I need to do. Sounds simple, right? But after, as you can see, my hair's just starting to look kind of funky, greasy. I need to take a shower. I'm taking a shower, that's a whole experience all in itself. Allergic to the water. Yeah, actually, on my allergy patch test that was done, they were freaking out because I only came up not allergic to dairy and soy. Everything else on the test panels, which was outdoor molds, trees, grasses, weeds, allergic to all of it. And I was allergic to saline. Saline. And people were saying, well, maybe because some of us have this dermato dermatological thing that happens when we get scratched, it raises up in a welt. I do do that. But I did test allergic to the control saline and they they were like no surely not well guess what every time they flush my IV with saline that warm feeling that you get when you have uh, iodine contrast and the chemically taste in your mouth that happens with saline on me go figure. <laughs> yes, I'm weird. See, I mean, see, here's my hand. Look how red my face is. I'm flaring. And I even took an extra Benadryl this morning with my Zyrtec and Zantac. 300, 300, 300, 350 milligram Zantac. And here I am flaring my hiney off. And I don't think I'm going to be going up to the lake today. Even though it's beautiful out and I'd love to get out. Maybe that wind blowing outside is blowing around mold, pollen and stuff. I don't know. I love having the windows open because I like fresh air. And I love the outdoors. When I was a kid I, and younger, 20s and 30s, I was always outside. Loved working in gardens, lawn work, working with horses, the farm. I used to play Superwoman, basically. Worked 50 to 60 hours a week and took care of a farm too. 
kids helped out too, of course. They would do chores like help feed the animals and stuff like that. But I just wanted to start documenting what a day in my life is like. A little while ago, right before I started this video, I was just sitting here and the POTS, posterior orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's another one I'm not definitively diagnosed because they haven't done a tilt table test on me. But I was just sitting here with my legs propped up and my blood pressure, I don't know if it dro started to drop out or what was going on. I was sitting when it happened. I wasn't trying to stand up. It's, yeah, I get dizzy when I stand up too. But I'm used to that. That's what kind of always been there, kind of, I guess. So I'm used to that feeling. But my heart started doing the palpitation thing where it kind of, it feels like it like gets really big in your chest. Like it's, you know, trying to jump start. I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's palpitation, I'm guessing. It's what that is. <sighs> so I know my system is definitely not doing good today. So I'm not going anywhere on a gorgeous day. I just need to go lay down. I'm tired. The fatigue is bad on good days. And on bad days, <laughs> it's overwhelming. That reminds me, during that psyche valve that took six and a half, seven hours, I don't know. It was hours and hours. I was in agony during that kept nodding off that narcolepsy and was kicking in hard and usually I noticed that chocolate and some other high carb sweets but chocolate particularly um, will trigger the narcolepsy but I hadn't had any I was just worn out completely and that triggers you. I mean, it's everything you can do to try to stay awake, but you can't. And, that, and I would, you know, nod out and then shock back awake. And every time that happens, it triggers a flare. So that's what I was dealing with when I was trying to do the or psychological evaluation. Anyway. I suppose those evaluations are necessary. I wish there was an easier way for them to do it. I don't know why they don't just ask you and write when they know you're having trouble writing and staying awake. I don't know why they can't do that some other way. There's got to be something. Um... No, I'll go absolute hell. <sighs> Taking a shower, like I said, is a, an experience because if you get it too warm, you start flaring and feeling like you're going to pass out. And standing up for long periods of time, and yeah, 15 minutes to do a shower, 10 minutes, mm, I've got really long hair. I even cut off like, well, it was 17 or 19 inches back in January. And it's still about halfway down my hip, I guess, is the length. Much shorter it was to the back of my knees. Um, hadn't had it cut in years, which I used to have my hair cut every six months a trim about an inch or so it's really weird with this disease because um the collagen the eds part those weird things my hair and my nails grow really fast 
and so I can see why a doctor would think, you know, looking at you, well, you look healthy, you're radiant, you're glowing, <laughs> and flaring. See this red across here, across here. They even treated me for lupus. I don't know if I actually have lupus, but I was treated with Plaquenil. <clears throat> oh, and those tests are real fun when you have EDS eyes that work for about one or two minutes of reading and then the focus starts going out and it gets worse the longer you're trying and I have to turn my head back and forth from side to side to read even with glasses on it's really bizarre it's like spots in your vision come up that are grayed out and you can't see in those spots so if you turn your eyes to the side of what you're trying to read you can pick up what it says <sighs> see these finger look at those fingernails I keep them trimmed off because they'll turn into talons notice no moons another sign of EDS evidently but I have no moons on my fingernails some people with this disease their bowel system I've had trouble with stomach and bowels for years but well since I was born but some people have um, the throwing up thing my hiatal hernia which I'm diagnosed with for sure I don't know if it's because of it I'm guessing so I have a really strong stomach I'm not one that throws up at the drop of a hat some people can gag and throw up over poop or whatever that's not me I don't get grossed out and I don't very easily anyway um, I don't um, throw up and the times that I've actually gotten sick enough to throw up well like Ultram I'm allergic to Ultram projectile vomiting but I don't know if it's because of the hernia or whatever but when I throw up it's like it's very hard for that to happen and when I do I break blood vessels in my eyes and in my face and um, it looks horrible especially when it happens in your eyes because you get those big red spots in your eyes and the people look at you like you've been beat up it's like oh she's being abused <laughs> it's like no just threw up but yeah I think I had thrown up in my life maybe six or seven times my entire life that's not very many times I've been nauseous a whole lot of times but not um, just don't throw up I want I mean it feels like I want to but that ain't it doesn't happen very easy <sighs> And when I do throw up, I can't breathe, so I'd really rather not anyway, so I'm kind of glad I don't. Anyway, I wanted to, oh, I was going to talk to you about showers, the standing up thing for periods of time. Just exhausting. My feet with those bone, bone spurs fractures and my hips are not cooperative anymore bursitis both sides 
I've had steroid shots. They don't help. They did it first. First couple of times I had them, <clears throat> they helped. But not anymore. So, between my shoulders and my hips and my back, and my neck's always been a problem. My neck is a mess. Hot mess. And I've got the downturned eyes. Eyes that kind of turn down on the outside edge instead of being up like a normal person. EDS eyes. Just like Diane Driscoll. <laughs> Her family has the same eyes I do. <clears throat> Most people with EDS have eyes like that. And, yeah, my face looks swollen and puffy. My eyes look really puffy up, up above right in here. So it looks like I'm really drunk. No, I know. Stoned. Looks like I'm stoned. I'm not. That was teenage years. And very, not very often. I really didn't like it because it made me eat, and eating meant getting weight. That's another thing I was going to talk about. Some of the people with this disease get really skinny because they throw up and throw up and throw up. Not me. I've got that lucky, I don't know if there's, I think they said something about they discovered some gene where our bodies are too efficient at processing food, particularly carbs. Which, me, when I get depressed or anxious, I eat. I used to be a smoker. That's how I kept the weight off. I'd smoke instead of eat. But now I don't smoke. And I gained... 80 pounds. 80 pounds when I quit smoking. And I don't eat that much. You look at the actual what I eat every day. A normal person can eat that. I'm not even think about it. But when I was a teenager, I was highly, highly athletic, highly, highly active. Didn't sit behind the TV. I was outside all the time. Running with my friends all the time. I was a gymnast and acrobatics and dive team and water ballet and dance. Tap jazz ballet. For what? eight or nine years of my life, at least. And then, of course, I was still into that afterwards, too. I was always doing dance aerobics or something. But, yeah, some of us actually gain weight. So just because we don't look anorexic doesn't mean we're not sick. So don't overlook those people that seem to have weight on them and can't seem to get it off because they probably have this most likely and I mean I don't know I know a lot of women that have exceedingly hard times keeping the weight off when I was super young when I was younger teen teen twenties super active the most I could eat per day even active was like in high school I would have a bowl of cereal when I got home from school and that's all I'd eat all day wouldn't eat anything else a bowl of cereal and there's days I wouldn't eat anything and that was all to stay about 125 pounds 
So, when I actually started eating average everyday servings, because you get married and you're fixing food for your family and you sit down and you have a square meal like normal people do, it doesn't work. You immediately start gaining weight. <sighs> I think I have 10 foods I can eat without causing flaring. Organic chicken. I usually get uh, boneless, skinless, skinless organic chicken. Rice. But I need to stay away from rice because it's carb. And I will pack on the pounds if I eat rice or anything like that. And, oh my gosh. Pasta. Other, and bread. Love, love, love that stuff. But, the GMO and Roundup sprayed wheat. Yeah, no. Oh, I know uh, eating things like that will put on the pounds really fast for me. So, so those diet meals with the lasagna and all that that I used to eat, thinking, oh, I'm being healthy. Lean cuisine. <sighs> Weight Watchers. They all have carbs in them. Most of the dinners. Very few don't. They have some sort of carb. And it's stuff I'm allergic to. Highly. And I didn't know it. At least back then I didn't. I was trying to be healthy. Couldn't understand why I couldn't lose weight. Invisible illness. That's what this is. See how my right eye is a lot droopier than my left? That eye and that side of my face, when I'm sitting square, which I am right now, used to be, you know how our faces aren't exactly even? Mine used to be near even. And my right side actually used to be higher than my left. But my jawline was perfectly square. Now look at it. That's not square. This side has dropped. That happened literally overnight. Stroke? Possibly. I was under a lot of stress when that happened. Because that's when the doctors were giving me the looks like, you're insane. And I even told the doctor, I said, look at my face. I told him, I said, this happened almost like overnight. He's like, mm, I don't see what you're talking about. I see what I'm talking about. I look at myself in the mirror. You know, when you photograph, you have your good side that you want towards the camera. There's my good side. This used to be my good side. Now it's a mess. A hot mess. See, even the eyebrow is down further. It used to be up there. The whole thing, like, dropped. It was weird. <sighs> yes, my face is itches. Allergic flare. See? Even the neck flare going on here to see all that red. I wasn't going to make a big long video, but here I am in all my glory, warts and all. You can see a spot right here. I don't know if that's a normal sunspot from aging. That's another thing, by the way. 
my skin color changed when I was 34 or 35. I mean, it literally changed. And that seemed like pretty much overnight, too. Process of maybe a couple of weeks. But that, that summer, it, oh, that would have been the summer of 98. Was that, yeah. My skin color changed. That was actually right a few months before I got pregnant with my son. That my skin color changed. And I told my doctor about it. And he said, well, your eyes aren't yellow. You know, the whites of your eyes, liver problem. I've had my liver come up kind of funky on blood, blood work before, but it's been okay lately. But back at that time frame when my skin color changed. I mean, let's see. I don't know if it's going to show up. See the blotchy? That's called modeling. And I also have that weird rash that I don't know if it's soap or what's causing that. It's on uh, my thighs, butt, cheeks, arms, that, the upper part of the back side of my arm and outward side. Not on the inside, just the outer side and my forearms. It's a weird um, little dotted rash. You can see the modeling too or the you might be able to see the modeling better. See, look at that. Serious vascular issue going on there. That's not normal. I'm glad it's sunny because you can tell better. Oh, I also have veins. And the backs of my hands, all of a sudden it'll feel like somebody snapped me with a rubber band hard. Like pulled a rubber band up and just snap the back of my hands. And that area will suddenly swell up. And just painful. It's definitely a vascular thing. And I don't know what that is. Is that vascular EDS? Um, somebody on the support groups was saying something about FMD, fibromuscular dysplasia. By the way, I was in college or pre-med anatomy, physiology, all that stuff because I was in denial at the time or still trying to be in denial that I was sick and I thought maybe I just need a career change maybe I'm just worn out done with accounting tired of it tired of business management being behind computers all day so I wanted to be because one thing I always wanted to be was a physician. I would make a darn good one too. Because my science reasoning skills are extremely high. High IQ. And empathy. Something they try to train out of their medical students at medical school. It wouldn't have worked on me though. I don't conform. But I would have done really well in med school, I think. Not, I think, I know I would have rock star. Would have been one of the rock stars. But unfortunately, that's when my pisiform joint on both hands went while I was going to school. The first one went and I kept going to school. And you know how huge those anatomy physiology books in college. Oh man, they're big. 
heavy. <laughs> I couldn't carry them. And so I had to stop college. They went that dream down the tubes. And I thought I wanted to be a doctor that really helped people, but the I tend to be a bit of an empath, I think, maybe. But my empathy would have killed me to be a doctor that was in contact with really ill patients intimately. So I thought, what could I do? And I was like, radiology. You could really make an impact in radiology without having super close contact, intimate contact with patients. Because that would, it would kill me. Having to see someone so sick. But that's probably what would have made me a really great doctor too. Actually listening to the patients and not farming numbers out. Oh, I have to see 50 patients today. Got to meet that quota. <laughs> Corporate health care. Very bad idea. Turns physicians into robots is what it does. And that their, their way of training the medical students is nothing short of mind control programming. Look it up. The sleep deprivation. The ridicule in front of their peers and the patients. Mind control pro programming. That entire system needs an overhaul. There are a lot of great doctors that made it through that not completely damaged. That's why I finally got diagnosed because I found one of them that wasn't totally damaged. <clears throat> By the way, the DOs, their training's not quite as bad as the MDs. So you're probably gonna do better with one of those on a primary care physician somebody who listens and is observant. You need somebody that's got science reasoning skills and is highly perceptive. Like an investigator. Which I was told I should be an investigator. But it made me a pretty good researcher, I guess, medically. Speaking. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I've had a lot of contact with the medical field between being the office manager for a DO that specialized in soft tissue injury, managed um, several chiropractors underneath him for soft tissue care, uh, repairing soft tissue injuries without surgery. Surgery was last option, not first. between that, my own experience starting at 14 with my appendix and my EDSV 